Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We are now going to start the visual analytics lecture. This is the first visual analytics lecture. As you can see, I'm home today uh, because I have to do some other stuff after the lecture. So yeah, I'm not in the office. So as you can see, that's a little bit different background and also a bit of a different setup with the headphones and everything. So I, I hope that the sound is good. I, probably it's not as good as the setup that I have in the office, but I hope that it's at least acceptable. But yeah, this is the first Fish Analytics course uh, lecture in the course 4DV807. And we're going to have another one later. But before we begin, it's important to remember that these lectures are <laughs> Okay, so um, these lectures are supposed to be taken as like companions to the lectures that you're that you're uh, following on 4DV805 from Professor Andreas Cairns. His lectures are very much more geared towards the actual InfoVis part of the course, right? So this is, while we are going to talk about visual analytics, which is uh, related but not exactly the same. So, so there are many, many detailed concepts and ideas about InfoVis that you will, you will see in 4DV805 that you really, really should follow it very closely because it's really very important and tightly coupled with our course. Especially the next ones, which are on tasks and interaction. They are especially important because I was actually about to talk about the same things in this lecture, but I decided not to because I checked his lectures and I, said, and I realized that uh, it would basically be the same. So I didn't want to repeat that. But uh, I know that at least a couple of you guys are not enrolled in that course. Uh, so if you're not enrolled in that course, then please let me know, send me an email or something, and then I will make those lectures, those slides available to you so that you can take a look at them. Because I don't think Professor Andres Karens is actually recording videos, unfortunately. Um, but it's very, it, they are very nice lectures and they are very important to be taken together with, with our course. Okay. Now, now we go to the actual data thing. I thought, you know, maybe you guys would, um, would be interested in, in having at least a couple of examples of the kinds of things that you should do when it comes to the presentation of the data. Uh, and again, of course, introduction and motivation. This is more like conceptually, conceptual things that you have to basically come up by yourselves or um, use the references that you have in order to understand the data. But then we want to look at the data, right? We want a data report. So we want to know like quantitative uh, things about the data so that we can have a good overview of what's going on. So I found this, this, in, uh, this, this description, this quick description of, like, of, a, of a exploratory data analysis of this very simple data set in these, the, the slides here, the references to the right here. Uh, of Professor Jeffrey here, which is one of the most important visualization people in the world. So I found some slides from him and I thought it was really nice. So I decided to show uh, them to you a little bit in a different uh, way, but so that you just have a quick, like super, super simple idea of what you're supposed to show next week. Of course, we want to see your take on it, right? We want to see your twist on it. But this is just one example of things that we would like to see when it comes to the data report. And, and uh, this is the example data set that I'm gonna use. So it's a uh, motion pictures data, so it's about movies. There's, there are many movies, the movies are the data points. And then each movie has five variables, so title, the rating on the IMDB site, the rating on the Rotten Tomatoes site, and the rating on this MPAA, which is an association of motion pictures, something, I guess the actors, I don't, I don't know exactly, but it's motion, motion pictures, something associations, it's, you know, and the release date, which is a date, right? So these are five variables of each that each point has. And then for example, um, this is, uh, the distribution of IMDB ratings. Right. So, for example, depending on how many variables you have in your in your data set, you could 
generate one histogram like this for each variable and then discuss it a little bit. Like what it means, is it normally distributed? Is it left skewed, right skewed? Does it have just one peak or multiple peaks? Uh, and also, for example, in this case, you can see that there are many data, data points here with the null value. So you can, you can very quickly catch that just by generating a histogram like this, right? And, and that's, uh, of course, I mean, you could check it anyway. Uh, because null is null, so that's easy to check. But sometimes it's not null, sometimes it's something else uh, that might be wrong. Uh, and, and then you maybe using a, a histogram like this, you would very easily catch it. Like for example, maybe there was a distribution like this and then maybe you had the two or uh, the two here was shooting up for some reason. And that would make no sense. So that's the kinds of things that you might pick up if you simply do this very quick, very simple exploratory data analysis. Same thing for the, the Rotten Tomatoes rating. So you can see that this is super interesting because first of all, there are so many null values for the Rotten Tomatoes rating. And why that's, that's the case, who knows? Maybe, maybe some movies here only have IMDb rating. Some movies only have Rotten Tomatoes rating. For some reason, they were put together in the same data set. I don't know. Uh, but you can see there's much more here. This, this axis here goes up to 900 and this one goes up to 500. So you can see there's many, many more uh, data points no, with no values for Rotten Tomatoes rating than for IMDb rate, for example. And also the distribution is completely different. And that's why it's cool to, to put these two things uh, side by side and look at them like this. Uh, and that's something you can do in your data report also if you, if you have two different variables. There are other ways to compare, of course, but in this case, um, it's very interesting that I, at, at least personally, would expect that uh, the distribution was roughly similar because they're just movie ratings, right? So, I mean, of course, they're not the same. They'll never be the same, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, I would expect at least some similarity because they're just movie ratings. But actually, when you look at the IMDb and the Rotten Tomatoes rating, they are completely different. Right, the, the IMDb rating ratings uh, are well not normally distributed. They're skewed, but not they're not heavily skewed. They're moderately skewed, I, I would say. Uh, so you can you can see that there is a very clear bump here. While with the Rotten Tomatoes rating, is completely it's almost uniform, uh, except from the the really like the limits of zero and a hundred. Everything in between is very, very, almost uniformly distributed. And, and that's, that's very impressive. That's very interesting to see. And, and that's that, that just, it's such a simple thing that you can do. Just show some of your variables using histograms. And, and it gives a great insight into it. Another thing that you can do, which would be more or less like, let's say, similar or equivalent to what we did here, was to, to actually plot them both together, right? So just make a scatter plot of two different variables. Because for some reason you think that these two variables have something in common and they, 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 it's interesting to compare them. Or, or just compare all pairs of variables if you want. Just make one scatter plot like this for every pair of variables. Unless you have too many variables. So then in that case, just choose some of them. I don't know how many dimensions you have in your data. But for example, this, these are, there are some interesting things here to see that, well, you know what? Actually, the IMDb ratings and the Rotten Tomatoes <clears throat> sorry, ratings, even though they're quite uh, differently distributed by themselves, they do have very strong correlation. So the, you know, the, the movies that has, well, let's say they, they go up together. So in general, movies that have, good ratings on one side also have good ratings on the other side. Not perfectly uh, diagonally uh, correlated, but there is a correlation with some, expect, uh, with some exceptions, right? So it's, it's interesting to see, for example, what are these points that are falling away from the diagonal, right? Like, I don't know, if you take uh, this, this movie here, Eon Flux, I remember I've, I've watched like 10 minutes of this movie that I couldn't uh, keep on watching. <laughs> I don't know what you guys uh, know about it, but uh, I, I, I think it's a very bad movie. But uh, if you look at the IMDb ratings, it's actually quite good. 
eight point something, while the Rotten Tomatoes rating is ten. So these are these these points that fall apart, fall away from the diagonal. They they are the ones that where the correlation is really bad. And it's interesting to to maybe investigate that and say, well, why what's happening? Why is it so? Uh, something like I don't know. Let's see the Ten Commandments or Panic. I'm not sure which. Oh, well, Scream. Scream. I know everyone knows Scream. So Scream, for example, uh, has a very good Rotten Tomatoes rating, like 80 something, while it has a pretty bad IMDb rating of three. The Ten Commandments is the same. It's a very old movie. But you know, that's just exploratory data analysis at this point. It's just something you, you just show to us so that we have a, an, a feeling of what the data is about and what's, what's the, what, what kind of things are in the data in a very, very simple static way. And there is a, also, uh, you can see very clearly here that there are many movies that are rated on IMDb, for example, but not on Rotten Tomatoes, so they have zero. And then the same for, for movies that are rated on Rotten Tomatoes, but not on IMDb. Like, dude, where is my car? For some reason, there, there's no IMDb rating for that, or, it's, or maybe the rating is simply zero. And uh, premonition, for example. At the Godfather Part Two, for some reason, has a zero Rotten Tomatoes rating while nine in IMDb. Who knows why? Yeah, and and this is some other another way to to see that. For example, uh, year of release date, uh, and it, this is still like a like a histogram, um, but it's but instead of a histogram, well, it's not like a histogram actually because you're we're looking here at each uh, data value, so each year since uh, 1930 until 2030. And this is interesting because you can see that, again, th this brings you insights into the data because most of the movies are recent, very recent, around like 2005 to 2010. And then there are some movies in the future for whatever reason. So you have movies here, uh, uh, 2025, 2026, who knows? Go figure, right? So this is also some... These things are not only ways to, for you to give a general overview of your data, but also to detect problems like this if the movie is in the future right after 2020 i guess this this data set was probably an old one but if you have movies in the future then probably that's something weird like why would you give ratings to a movie that's going to be released in five years right so so basically um this is this is what a very simple very 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 simple exploratory data analysis step would look like before you even go to the actual visual analytics right and the reason why i say here exercise skepticism is because try not to to try not to have too many assumptions about your data when you're looking at it, at it from this point of view try not to expect too much try to take it as it is uh, and that probably you're, you're going to come up with better uh, solutions that way. So you check for data quality like this, and you also present the data to us. And one interesting, like very simple workflow for this is start with univariate summaries, which are like the histograms. Then start with that. So check each dimension just individually, and then take a step into checking them together, uh, like a scatter plot, what we did. And just try not to be too, to have too many assumptions about the data. And, and that, would be, that would be a super, super simple, quick uh, example of a kind of a presentation that you could, well, part of the presentation that you could give to us next week. Other than, of course, the, um, the motivation and the introduction about the data, right? So this would be, let's say, what we would consider as an interesting data report. 